children go where I send thee. Oh, how shall I send thee? I'm gonna send thee one by one, one for the little bitty babe born in Bethlehem. One by one, we were sent with the hopes and fears of all the years. One by one, we were sent from the cotton fields and cane breaks, lush and green with the promise of tuition. One by one, we were sent from RFDs and zones and avenues and lanes and circles. One by one, we were sent from country creeks and city streets. We were sent from long work days, short Saturdays, and singing happy, shouting Sundays. We are the fourth generation from slavery removed. Children of the 40s, children of determined parents who sacrificed to see us through. In growing numbers, we came to the valley, children of the 40s, the New Deal, the chicken in every pot, and nothing to fear but fear itself. I went to the valley. I didn't go to stay. My soul got happy. And I stayed a while. <laughs> we came to the valley, and we stayed a while. And we learned to love the names of people we never met. John W. Davison, and William Marita Hubbard, Anna Jean, and Collis P. Huntington, Warrior C. Peabody, Henry Alexander Hunt, and Samuel Henry Bishop. Robert Patton and Horace Mann Bond. We came to the valley and we stayed a while and we learned to love and revere other people and other names. Some we knew and some we did not. Cornelius B. Troop, W.W.E. Blanchett, and C.W. Pettigrew, Hauser A. Miller, L.R. Bywaters, Julius Simmons, and Annie Mae Hall, Homie Regulus, W. W. Hawkins and Ozias Pearson. We came to the valley and we stayed a while learning to love other faces and other names. Hawkins, Varna, and Love. Robinson, Irwin, and Floyd. Sampson and Sims and Dillard and Hicks. Murray and Bannister. Anderson and Stallworth. Maddie Holmes and Junior Frambro. Elaine Douglas challenged us in English. E. Joseph Atkins challenged us in theater. William Mathis and George Adams challenged us in music. E.H. Piero challenged us to keep abreast of world affairs in the classroom and on the campus abroad. So many men and women, unnamed here, met us in the valley and challenged us. To them all, we now bow. Oh, yes, we came to the valley. We didn't come to stay, but we made good friends there, and they lasted a lifetime. Oh, yes, we came to the valley. We didn't come to stay, but we found ourselves here, and we stayed a while, leaving renewed and prepared to meet the going on world. Oh yes, we went to the valley. We didn't go to stay, but we found ourselves here and we stayed a while. We learned a new song here and we stayed a while and sang it. Fort Valley State, Fort Valley State, our souls, our lives to thee we dedicate. Our souls we blend to sing thy name. Our lives to thee we dedicate. 
eternal praise we do proclaim, faithful and true, Fort Valley State. We at thy call forever wait. We lift our hearts in thankfulness for loyalty and thoroughness. We love to hear thy sweet name called. You are the dearest school of all. Our hearts to thee will e'er belong. You are so steadfast, brave, and strong. We love you so, Fort Valley State. Our loyalty we dedicate. Thy name forever we proclaim. Fort Valley State, we love thy name. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come this afternoon in the precious name of Jesus. We come, Lord, to simply say thank you for this day, a day that we come for the scholarship banquet of the Fort Valley State University. Father, we thank you for the university, the one that afforded us a place to be educated when no other would. Thank you for opening those doors. Thank you, Lord, because doctors have come from the Fort Valley State University, educators, lawyers, doctors, representatives, senators, sports players. Thank you, Lord, for this school that has been a beacon light for so many years. Lord, we pray now for those that are aspiring to go to the Fort Valley State University. Father, that they will find the hope, the, the same offerings that it offered so many of us. That is an opportunity to excel. We thank you now. We pray for our leaders of this alumni association. We pray for Representative Smyron that will bring a word today. Lord, that you would use him for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for those that have come to share in this experience today. Pray thy blessings upon them, Lord. We just thank you now for this day and all of your blessings. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mr. President, our presider, to our speaker, the Honorable Calvin Smyre, and all that are assembled, good afternoon. I am not the person, I am not the official representative of that person, but I have been assigned the task by the person to read this on their behalf. First, from the Mayor of Dublin. Dear friends, on behalf of the Dublin City Council, I welcome and extend heartfelt blessings from the City of Dublin as you celebrate the 14th Annual Charter and scholarship banquet. This year's theme, Fort Valley State United, empowering scholars with the challenge of excellence, tells us of your commitment to encourage and empower the next generation towards developing their unique gifts and talents to propel the future. I wish you much success for an enjoyable and successful banquet and look forward to seeing you to, to seeing tomorrow's bright new scholars. Phil Best Senior, Mayor of Dublin. From the House of Representatives. Dear Fort Valley State University National Alumni Chapter, Dublin Lawrence. Thank you for inviting me to bring greetings from the state capitol and to welcome your esteemed keynote speaker to the middle Georgia and to where we all consider God's country. Yes, Dublin is still considered rural and definitely smaller than his home in Columbus. Dean of the House, Kevin Smyre, and I have developed a great relationship over the past nine years and one of mutual respect. Dean Smyre has served this state 
for 40 plus years. And for that, I am truly grateful and appreciative beyond what words can describe. Calvin is respected on both sides of the aisle. And all of us look to him for guidance during times of trial. He is truly a great leader. Dean Smyre, I am sorry that I am not delivering these words personally as I had already committed to the Medical Association of Georgia that I would participate in a panel discussion at Brasstown Valley, and that is where I am. Thank you for taking the time to speak to the greatest alumni of Fort Valley State University. Thank you for your service to the state and for your friendship. Keep the Wildcats in the room in order. And thank you, Ms. Marilyn, for this opportunity. Thank you. And I present this to the speaker on their behalf. Hi, I'm Matt South, inviting you to come see us at Dexter Meat Company. Our fresh cut meats include cube steak, stew beef, chuck roast, chuck eye steak, ground beef, ground chuck, and if you love steaks, you'll really love our New York strip, T-bone, and our ribeye and choice or prime cuts. And our marinated steaks have a distinctive taste that you'll be sure to love. We invite all our neighbors to come see us for the freshest cut of meat. Remember, we cater to. Call ahead and we'll have it fixed for you. Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, Saturday, 8 to 6. Hi, I'm Perry Williamson. We've been serving the Dublin Lawrence community for over 90 years here at Williamson's Bakery. We specialize in donuts, cakes, pies, cupcakes, cookies, birthday cakes. They're our business, not a hobby. And don't forget our large selection of cheese straws. For special orders, contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or better yet, just come get you some. When you stop by, be sure to try our all new Pig in the Blankets. We have bacon, sausage, and chicken. We're located at 1634 Veterans Boulevard, Dublin, Georgia. With the hot, freshest donuts, come to Williamson's Bakery. We proudly support our area athletics. Good afternoon, Fort Valley State University alumni. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all of the Fort Valley State University alumni, relatives, and friends. Good afternoon to our very special guest, Representative Calvin Smiley. <coughs> We are honored to have you as our very special guest in our city as the keynote speaker for our 14th annual, annual scholarship banquet. I'm wearing two hats. One as a Dublin City Councilman at large, thank you for your support over the years and you, for your continued support. And as a Fort Valley State University alumni, a wildcat, a wildcat until the day I die. <laughs> I bring greetings to you from the city of Dublin and we are very proud to have you and the work that you do in our community sponsoring the Blue Machine Marching Band to partic in participating in the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Parade and I encourage the Alumni Association to continue to serve our community by helping educate some of our young people with your annual scholarships. You are helping more than you know. To all other special guests that I might haven't seen or greeted, we greet you on this special occasion. To all of our out-of-town guests, we hope you stay a while and enjoy our newly opened Southern Pines Water Park. Stay cool with us. <laughs> I have a gift for our very special uh, guest, Representative uh, Calvin Smiley. This gift is being presented to you for being here in the city as our guest and as the keynote speaker. We hope you enjoy your stay here, and we wish you safe travels back to your destination. Thank you, Mr. Councilman. Right. A little bit earlier, there was a slight mix-up. Someone should have said Jerry Chapman is going to give the uh, 
necrology litany, but they said Jerry Davis. Uh, but that's okay. <clears throat> there was a time at Fort Valley State when all I had money for was uh, tuition. And Jerry was nice enough to encourage me and make a, a pallet on his floor so I could keep on sleeping. <laughs> but I hung in at the valley. Uh, good, evening. good evening. Tonight we pause to commemorate the names of, of persons who have walked the path of life with us in this Dublin Lawrence alumni chapter and have now ended their toils and joined the band of angels. Will you please stand? Lena Maudel Beard, 2010. Julia Udell Allen, 2011. Lucy Laney Perry, 2011. Patricia Ann Stuckey, 2015. Drusy Perry Little, 2019. Ever living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved, we lived our lives together. Time has passed and we still yearn for them. Though the links of life are broken, our love and longing cannot break. We see them now with the eye of memory. Their faults forgiven, their virtues grown larger, so does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. Their memories of blessing forever. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, that now they live and reign with you. As a great crowd of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings and we offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. Thank you. You may be seated. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I have the honor to pay tribute to two of Dublin Lawrence County Alumni Chapter Charter members of the Fort Valley State University. It is indeed a privilege to recognize this year a male and a female member of the chapter. We pause today to lift up true Wildcat banner carriers. Our female is a mother and a grandmother. She is loyal, a diligent church worker, a community leader, an Apple Kappa Apple woman, and a long-standing educator in the Dublin Lawrence County school system. She received her Bachelor of Science degree from Fort Valley State College in 1952 in education. Our female honoree is the second oldest chartered member of the Dublin Lawrence Alumni Chapter of the Fort Valley State University. She attends meetings on a regular basis and actively participates in all fundraiser activities and social functions, even if she has to call for a pickup. She's there. This is a true, determined, active Wildcat. Our male honoree is a husband, a father, grandfather, a man of distinction, a person of respect, a role model in his church and community, and a person of leadership. He also is a faithful, proud, true Wildcat. He attends Fort Valley State University football games <coughs> whether well, they're at home or away when possible. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in Social Studies from Fort Valley State College in 1960. Our honoree is the oldest active male member of the Dublin Lawrence County Alumni Chapter of the Fort Valley State University. He actively attends all meetings, participates in all social and fundraising activities. Both our honorees Torches will forever burn for the love of their true Wildcat, the Fort Valley State University. We, 
the Dublin Lawrence County Alumni Chapter of the Fort Valley State University would like to give honor to Mrs. Alice P. Williams Horn Moore and Mr. Linton Franklin O'Neill. Would you both come forward, please? Ms. Moore, I present this plaque to you, and it reads, Dublin Lawrence Fort Valley State University National Alumni Association, presented to Mrs. Alice P. Williams Horn Moore, chartered member 2005, for loyal and dedicated participation, June 1, 2019. Congratulations to you. I would just like to say thank you to all of you who have attended this uh, presentation this afternoon and have attended this celebration. And I am really proud of being a graduate of the Fort Valley State University. Yeah, 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 yeah. After four years, they gave me a wonderful background. So after I had been there for four years, and two years later, I was able to attend Columbia University uh, uh, University in New York City, where after one year, I received my master's degree in education. And I am proud of what the Fort Valley University College gave me a good background for attending that one of the world's largest universities in the United States. Thank you. Mr. O'Neill, this plaque is presented to you and it reads, Dublin Lawrence, Fort Valley State University National Alumni Association, presented to Ms. Linton Franklin O'Neill, chartered member 2005 for loyal and dedicated services, <laughs> June 1, 2019. Congratulations. Thank you. I want to thank the unit and most of all, thank Fort Valley State for this fine man letting me become a great a young man. My eyes are really open at Fort Valley State and I'm, I'm still a dedicated member and I love the Wildcats. Thank you. Thank you. With Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance, I can get auto, home, life, even banking all in one place. Pretty convenient if you ask me. Always the home team, Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Visit us online at gfbinsurance.com. So what makes OFTC a top choice for college? Here's why. You get hands-on training, and OFTC instructors have years of industry experience. You see, when you have access to that kind of knowledge, it makes a difference. And with financial aid, grants, and scholarships, OFTC is affordable. You can step into your new career debt-free. Think differently about college and make Oconee Fall Line Technical College your top choice. OFTC is an equal opportunity institution. And again, I do want to uh, say congratulations to Mr. O'Neill and Ms. Uh, Alice Moore. They both were my school teachers at an early age. <laughs> and I want to let I want to let y'all know we. Some of the, I'm going to say this. I'm going to get off strip for just a minute. Mr. O'Neill and I, we were on the same staff at East Lawrence High School, and some of the greatest moments 
in education didn't come with teaching, <laughs> teaching students. Some of the greatest moments in my life at East Lawrence High School with Mr. O'Neill on an in-service day. We were all assembling in, in his room, and then we could let the gossip begin. Mr. Turner, you were there too. <laughs> <laughs> and I could just name, I could just name them off. But those, that was the most, one of the, some of the most pleasing times in my life. And I'm proud of you, Mr. O'Neill. And Ms. Moore, I'm proud of you as well. You taught me in the sixth grade, you taught me science, and you taught me how to sing very well. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want you wildcats saying that I don't know how to sing the album model. You probably couldn't tell you who was in your first your freshman orientation teacher anyway. That's where you learn how to sing. Okay, where are we? I'm back on strip now, I hope. <laughs> okay. This time we're going to have the oratorical contest showcase winners. They're going to be presented by Miss Marilyn Moore. Uh, then it'll be followed with the grace by Reverend Dr. Willie Evan Edmund. And Miss Moore will tell, tell us how we assembly or line up for, for our dinner. It is a pleasure on behalf of the Dublin Lawrence Oratorical Contest to present to you the oratorical winners for the year of 2019, of which the Dublin Lawrence chapter, Fort Valley State University National Alumni Association is a co-sponsor, and we're pleased with that. Before I proceed to present to you the speakers or the winners, let me abreast you of year 2020, the Lord's willing, April 19, 2020, we will assemble again for the next oratorical contest. And we would like to make you a committee of one. As chairperson of that committee, I challenge and charge each of you to go out and get a youth and have them to come out to the First African Baptist Church and present their presentation of African Americans and the vote. African Americans and the vote. We also would like, to you, like for you to pay attention to the newspaper in the upcoming months and weeks because you will see new information concerning prizes and update that we are certain that will enlighten from middle school to those of you who are sitting in this room. No age is too young, younger than middle school, and no age is too older than our senior citizens. So please come out, African Americans and the vote, April 19, 2020. From the high school, we have our first place Winner, Miss Aviance Marshall from Dublin High School, who could not be with us today because she is in Texas for the summer. Mr. Austin Johnson, Dublin High School, second place, had a previous engagement. And Miss Kamisha Miles, because of graduation and other things that took place, her job would not let her off and we certainly appreciate her being committed to that and then also being responsible enough to call us as late as this evening because she did try to get off but was not able to do so. But we are so pleased to present to you at this time and have him to give you a rendition of his oratorical speech, Mr. Haven Stanley, Dublin Middle School, Mr. Stanley. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Haven Stanley, and I'm very happy to be here. Now, I was asked to present a speech I presented at the oratorical contest on the topic of black migration. And some of you may be asking, what was the black migration? Well, it was when millions of African American men and women migrated from the South to try to find better lives. And you might be also asking, why did they migrate? Well, this is how it all started. Now, as we all know, 
slavery is abolished and blacks are free. Now though there is still segregation, now African Americans were okay with segregation in a sense, as long as it was separate but equal. However, it was nowhere near equal. African Americans were given less job opportunities, which forced them to share property, which was very little economical help. Even the schools that were mainly for black children were funded very poorly. You know, that wasn't enough. There was a group of people that called themselves white supremacists. Now, these people believed that white was the supreme race. And by the law of the First Amendment, they had the right to speak what they believed. They then soon formed a social group known as the, Ma the Knights of Mary Vega as a tribute to a girl who was killed by a so-called Jew. They then soon formed a social group, I mean, the act of the Knights of Mary Vega slowly but surely began to become more and more brutal. And that was when the organization known as the Ku Klux Klan or KKK was born. Now, the KKK did despicable acts such as extreme taunting and even going as far as to murder hundreds of African Americans, though there was nothing they could do about it. Sure, they protested, but that only intimidated the KKK and made them continue their murderous crimes. And by this time, these crimes were inevitable. The more the African Americans tried to get respected, they were respected even less. They were taunted and tormented and cast out among the rest. And meanwhile, World War I was a high gear with the many jobs open, mainly in the North. This was a perfect opportunity for African Americans. Yet they were still being taunted and abused and taunted and abused and taunted and abused. They said enough. They had enough. No more. No more living the fear of the people that hate them and go to larger sense to hurt them. No more tolerating their conditions because they know they can have more, be more. So no more. So more and more African Americans heard about the jobs open in the North. So they migrated, tried to find better lives. Now, even though segregation was illegal in the North, there was still a lot of racism. Soon there became to be too many African Americans in the North. They began to come problem for a living space and housing. However, they remembered, remembered the struggle and where they came from. And they said no more, no more conflict. No more struggling because they were survivors. And you know what? Because of this housing conflict, they formed their own cities. They took charge of what they believed in. They enhanced their own culture from their food to even creating their own type of music, which became very popular. Now, there's still conflict today. Conflict over land and people who also want to be better, so they try to migrate too. However, we all have to remember, if our ancestors can make a change, we can too. Thank you. To so many of you who count on us for your prescription medication needs, I'd like to thank you for your years of trust. To those who've yet to choose Tomlinson Pharmacy and Medical Park Pharmacy, I invite you to stop by and discover what makes us different. Medical Park Pharmacy is your family's one-stop destination for their prescription, health, and wellness needs. Our staff greets you with a smile and provides a level of customer care and expert service that truly sets us apart. Realizing your time is valuable, we'll always strive to have your prescriptions filled in minutes, not hours. Have a concern about a new medication? Our pharmacists are available to discuss the instructions and precautions. In addition, Medical Park Pharmacy also stocks a wide array of over-the-counter medications and medical supplies. With the drive through window, free delivery within city limits, and refills through our phone IVR website or mobile phone app, staying healthy has never been so convenient. At Medical Park Pharmacy, local owners Wendell and Wendy Smith provide hands-on service to ensure your satisfaction. We care about earning your business and strive to make you a regular customer. Come experience a difference. Visit Medical Park Pharmacy today. People often ask me why I got into racing in the first place. Well, there are actually three reasons. One, for the fun of it. Two, for the excitement. And three, for the pizza. Hurry into your Jet Food Store today and don't forget to call ahead and we'll have your favorite Hunts Brothers Pizza made to order. Come to your hometown Jet Deli today.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good to be here. Good to see everybody. Those that I know and those that I do not know. Always good to be in the number. Madam Marilyn Moore has been trying for a few years to get Representative Calvin Smyre here for this program. She even called me a couple of times, wanted to get some numbers and how to contact and all of that. So, but nevertheless, she has been successful right. in her endeavor. That's what a good, grand, worthy matron do. <laughs> Those of you who know her history and the Eastern Star history here in this state, this good state of Georgia. But let me, as I tell everybody, it's good to be home. It's good to be at this place, at this time. I grew up in Green Grove African Baptist Church Amen. at that time. Amen. When it was behind May's store Amen. on the corner of Leonard and Woodard Street. Amen. That's where I met Miss Linda. <laughs> we were young folks then. We could walk to Sunday school, walk to church. And be in a hurry to leave and get back up to May Soda Shop so we could <laughs> mingle. But nevertheless, those were the days. Time move on and people and places must change because of various circumstances. It is my task, my honor, my pleasure to present to some and introduce to others. And I forget a little long-winded, I'm not the main speaker. <laughs> I'm just here to introduce the speaker. But he's been around in public life for a long time. And he's been doing something, okay? When you do something, you get to go to different places and make speeches, become head of various organizations, and all of that in your tenure of serving. First of all, I know they got it listed last on here, but he was, he was born and raised in Columbus, Georgia. And he's a lifelong member of Ward Chapel AME Church, where he continued to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees. And he matriculated at the Fort Valley State University in the fall of 1966 and graduated in 1970. Earning a BS degree and majoring in business and amounting in accounting. And he has been awarded some honorary degree specifically won a doctorate of human letters from the Mohawk School of Medicine in 2015. His career path has taken him from being a community organizer. We know who else was a community organizer they used to laugh about, didn't they? Number 44. Yeah. But that community organizer had plans and was swift enough to beat him twice. <laughs> Barack Hussein Obama. All right. He worked in the War on Poverty program in Columbus, Georgia. And he retired recently as Executive Vice President, Corporate External Affairs of Sonovas Bank. And he's the former president of the Sonovas Foundation. And Sonovas is not just one of those little community drop-off banks, they have over $32 billion in assets. All right. All right. Okay, so they up there with the big boy. Yeah. So he retired after 38 years of service. 
He was elected to the House of Representatives in 1974, four years out of the valley. At a young tender age of 27. And now he is the dean of the Georgia House, serving 45 years. With that being known and respected on both sides of the aisle, what that means is the Republicans and the Democrats, and independent too, if that be one or two. All right? He served on the Appropriation Committee. That's important. That's where they dive up the money. That $28 billion budget for the state. He's also served as chairman of the House Rules Committee. The Industrial Relations Committee, the University System of Georgia Committee. I like that because they have oversight of spending the money for the state public colleges and universities where we fall at. Albany State, Fort Valley State, and Savannah State. He was very instrumental in getting that MLK statue on the campus of the Capitol. Okay. In 1979, he was elected as chairman of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. And in 1982, president of the Georgia Association of Black Elected Officials. In 86, he made history as Governor Joe Frank Harris appointed him his administrative flow leader. First time, a man or woman of melanated skin has held that position. 1985, he began on the national scene, being elected to the Democratic National C Committee. He was the first African American from Georgia to serve in that post. As I said, he served on many committees, has been honored by a lot of people. He's president emeritus of the Black Caucus of State Legislators, past president of their foundation, a member of the National Conference of State Legislators. And in 2009, the Congressional Black Caucus, that's our peers on the national level, the from all of the 50 United States that's of Afro-American descent, presented him with the prestigious Phoenix Award. In 1980, he was selected by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution as one of the 10 best legislators in the state. All right. He was very instrumental in the construction of the $62 million Columbus River Center and served as its chairman of the six member project development team that built the facility. <coughs> if any of you have ever been there, it's a beautiful place. Those of us who spent our time down there know so on the first weekend in November for the Fountain City Classic, they have a lot of events there, so we've seen it. Uh, He's a member of the Board of Trustees of the Moai School of Medicine, Columbus State Foundation, and the Fort Valley State Foundation, where he serves as chairman. And with that, Fort Valley State Foundation, we have over $15 million now in assets. And we want to, we need to make it up to 115. It's just, <laughs> we know we need, the, we need money. We want good students, and good students want scholarship. They want, they're going where they can get a free ride, ladies and gentlemen. They're not, they're not picking up pennies, and you, you know, we, we got to do better if we want the brightest and the best. Um, yours truly, I am, I'm Charles Robinson, and I serve as chair of the Finance Committee of the Foundation. 
and I've also served as the audit committee chair, but we keep your money and try to guide it in good hands. Calvin's been at it a lot longer than I have. I've been there around 10 or 11 years. He's been there about 20, 25 years. So it's growing and we need to do better. I have this little lapel pin. Some of you may see it and it's got FVSU at the bottom. It's a scroll. Each one reach one. Our educational endowment for teacher education is a little over a million dollars. We want to make it grow so we can have more people in education like we used to. Okay, getting back to, in 76, he served as Southern Advisor to the Carter Mundell campaign. In 1980, he served as Deputy Campaign Director in Kentucky for Carter Mundell. Okay. So the Fountain City Classic is having its 30th anniversary this year. You all get there. Calvin started it. And my good friend Ted Pooler was one of his co-chairs for many years. And, he, and they have given out over $3 million in scholarship. So let's help them. Without further ado, our speaker for the evening, the afternoon, the Honorable Calvin Smiley. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. When it comes to shopping for lawn and garden, there's one thing that you'll want to remember. If you can't do business here, you just can't do business. Take it from Glenn Register, owner of Hometown Supply in downtown Dublin. Anything they need for us to do, we do. We get warranty with everything, new and new. You can get what we call a tractor style mower that's less expensive than a zero turn is. You can spend basically half the money and do the same job. It just won't do it quite as fast. Come down and look at what we have, service it, we get parts for it. We can take it down there behind the store. We got a place down there we cut, show them everything about it. Take it out, set it up, do the financing on it, payment where you can handle it. You can get whatever you want and just about name your game. This is a one-stop shop. We have a belt for about anything. You either bring us some numbers or bring your old belt in and that's the key to really knowing you know what you need. Yeah, we carry tires, tubes for mowers, placement wheels. We can get just about anything for any machine you need. See the man with the plan, Glenn Register. Call 272-0345 for more information. If you can't do business here, you just can't do business. Thank God for the opportunity to, to be here because a lot of people didn't get up this morning and we're in church and so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm happy to be here and uh, Charles thank you for that introduction. Uh, now I know who I am. Um, but you know, I say this a lot, and I said it to a group of students today before I came here. I had three events in Columbus today. One of them was a scholarship breakfast for 16 students that we're trying to send to college, the men of Omega Sapphire fraternity. And I told, I heard that, and somebody said, mm, all right. <laughs> and, um, and I told them, that my favorite words are these. You'll never see a turtle sitting on the fence post 
that didn't get there by themselves. Because right. if you ever see a turtle sitting on a fence pole, you know that he or she didn't get there by themselves. So I didn't get here by myself. Right. And I thank the Lord every day because you're in business for 45 years. Somebody, somebody help keep you there. So I tell the people in Columbus, Georgia all the time, these two words, and Boston told me this last night, two simple words, thank you. That's all you can say. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me this far. And I appreciate the people of Columbus, Georgia, because 45 years is a long time. And um, I'm happy to be here. So Charles, thank you. And I'm going to tell you something about Charles Robinson. If you go and look up Fort Valley State University on Wikipedia, you'll see the history of it. And it'll say 13 notable alumni. All right. There's one of them right there. So give him a round of applause. Because every time I call him, he never says no. He never says no. One thing about him, he'll write a check, but you know you got to be accountable for the check. And that's one thing about him. He's a very prudent man, and I want to thank him for all of his support over the years. And then I want to thank um, Mr. Knight, Mr. President, for having me here. As chapter president, uh, I've been uh, national alumni president. In fact, our national president is here, but I was national alumni president before I became chairman of the foundation. And um, so uh, being a president of alumni chapter is, is, um, is uh, something to do, and, uh, but it, it, it's a great, re great, great reward. So we thank you. We really thank you. And uh, to Ms. Moore, uh, Ms. Moore is a persistent lady. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. That means she's dedicated. Because I just can't believe this. It was a year ago. Isn't that time? See how time flies? Yes. She and I talked over a year ago, and I told her I couldn't come in 2018. She said, would you come in June 1st, 2019? <laughs> and I said, that's over a year ago. She said, it'll be here before you know it. <laughs> and guess what? Yes. It's here before you know it. And I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Continue to do it. We need you, and we need this chapter. So, th so give them two a round of applause, and thank you, and all the members of the chapter. Ed Boston, thank you. My, we were in school together. Um, he finished on time. Uh, he was, a, he was a, a, a much, much smaughter than I. I didn't graduate cum laude. I graduated, thank the Lord. Uh, but um, but uh, Boston was very, very, in fact, for Boston, I, she, I think first time, first roommate at, at Jeans Hall. And um, so he, he's been a, a staple in Fort Valley, and he's his lovely wife, Daphne, who I've known since her days at Fort Valley State University. It's always good to see you, and uh, just love your family, the Taper family. It's just good people, so thank you, both of you all, for being here. Appreciate you very, very much. You don't know how much I appreciate y'all's friendship over the years. You've been different as a man, and I don't take it for granted. Thank you. And to Luann Gross, who's on my foundation board, our foundation board, and a lady that I admire and respect because I've been national president, and I know what it takes. Nobody can break your back unless you bend it. So you have to stand strong. And that's a strong lady, and I appreciate her leadership. Wave your hand, stand up, Duane Ross, president of our National Alumni Association, Duane Ross. And I want to thank the city councilman here for that gift, uh, Brother Davis. I appreciate it very much, um, being an elected official. Uh, you know how it is to serve. People throw rocks, but they hide their hands. But, uh, but it's an honor to, to be here with you as a member of the city council. And I thank you. And I thank Mayor Best for his, for his nice letter. And Matt Hatchett, who I respect and have gotten an opportunity and chance to work with over the years. And uh, I appreciate him. I just texted him and told him that I was here. I have the letter. And uh, you can't take it back, because <laughs> I have it in writing. But, uh, but it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm just delighted, and, and I'm thankful uh, to be here. And then, before I give my brief remarks, I want to thank that young man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to. Yeah. I just want to say to Haven Stanley, 
keep doing what you're doing. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. If you just watch the newspapers and watch the TV, black men, I mean, there's a lot of targeting going on. And, uh, and to see these young ladies and young men come here and to participate in the oratorical contest, we need to keep pushing them and, and encouraging them to be more, to be the best that you can be. So young man, congratulations. What grade are you in? Eighth grade. That's a mama. That's a man. Give him a round of applause, y'all. Thank you. Man. And last but not least, we, that's my road dog right there, Ted Pula. Um, in 1989, I got a visit from Fort Valley State and Albany State, Dr. Black and, um, and, and uh, Dr. Prater. And they came to my office at Sonovas and said, we want you to do something. I said, what's that? They said, we want you to chair a football game that's going to come to Columbus. And I said, uh, just tell me about it. They told me about it. And they talked me into doing it. And I told them I'd do it for one year. Now, 30 years later, <laughs> I'm still chairing it. But that was a young man who was connected to me at the hip for many years. And, and I, 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 he, he just done a, he and his wife have just been such great friends of mine. So Ted Poole, thank you for being here. Give him a round of applause. Thank you very, very much. For Fort Valley State, our lives to thee, we dedicate. Yeah. You know, other than my family and my church, <coughs> Fort Valley is my heart. And um, to have this chapter anniversary and this scholarship uh, makes me think of the legacy of honor and, and, and the history of Fort Valley State. And Fort Valley State just didn't become Fort Valley State by itself. There's a, a, a legacy of honor. There's a proud history. And um, the fact that you are here, you have paved the way for Fort Valley to be where it is today. And if you think about it, uh, there's a lot of sweat and toil that came with the making of our great institution. So I want to thank this chapter, uh, Dublin Lauren, for all that you've done, for the fact that you have continued to provide support for Fort Valley State University is, um, is, is, is absolutely amazing. And for that, um, uh, we are very, very thankful. Because what we should be trying to do is educate the next generation of leaders. And, um, our young people now, in fact, I do this everywhere I go, because if you were at Fort Valley between 2000 and 2019, stand up. Well, we got one. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. I'm gone, Dublin, because I usually don't have one to stand up. Because you know what? That's what we got to do. We got to grow leadership. And, and, and our young people have to be more responsible. I meet with a young group called LOTT, L-O-T-T, Leaders of Today and Tomorrow. And I tell them, but they want everything right now. All right. Instant. No toiling, no sweat, no equity, now. And I tell them that in order to get where you are, there is a sweat equity that you have to pay. And uh, I am just thrilled that you are here because we need to keep bringing in our young people and pulling them up by the bootstraps. Mid-State Pools and Spas knows pools, in-ground pools to above-ground pools. Mid-State Pools and Spas has over 35 years in the industry, building over 3,000 pools. We build all of our own pools, never subcontracting the work out. So if you're ready to build a pool, renovate a pool, or if you need weekly maintenance or liner replacement with a full 20-year warranty, call the professionals at Mid-State Pools and Spas. Visit our showroom today at 2273 Veterans Boulevard in Dublin and see the new line of marquee spas. 
For the ultimate in hot tub experiences, choose Marquee Spas. Also see our new selection of casual patio furniture, available now at our showroom, Mid-State Pools and Spas, where we know pools. First Lawrence Bank invites you to experience banking at its best. Whether you have personal or business needs, we're a full service bank big enough to handle all of your banking needs and small enough to provide you with that personal touch you've grown to expect from a community bank like First Lawrence Bank. Looking forward to your future, that's First Lawrence Bank in Dublin and Dexter, member FDIC. I want to say something about our 10th president, Dr. Paul Jones. Paul Jones is the real deal. He is one of the best I've seen come our way. And I am really thrilled to be here to support him and to tell him in absentia that uh, we support you and we appreciate you. And uh, the reason I want to say some good things about Fort Valley, because if you don't use your bull home, some people use that as a spit to them. All right. Wake up, church. Hello. All right. If you don't use it as a bull horn, somebody will use it as a spit to them. Fort Valley State University has a proud history and a legacy of honor. And I am just thrilled to be here. And Fort Valley, uh, uh, this past year, was named number one public HBCU in the state of Georgia. Number one. And um, we uh, are committed to preparing the most competent and competent uh, professionals in Georgia, period. And uh, we stand at the forefront of that. Fort Valley State University, whether you know it or not, is the only school in the nation with the combined tradition of a historically black college, a land-grant institution, and a Georgia college. Right. We have a unique platform, a unique responsibility to give students honest direction about the skills they will need to jumpstart their careers. Whether you call it tough love, frank talk, or clear guidance, we know that this is what Fort Valley State University tradition is all about, broadening students' understanding of what excellence truly is. We are committed at the university to preparing the most competent and confident professionals for the state of Georgia, period. Thank you, Dr. Jones, for your leadership. And I appreciate you. And um, Columbus will be having our chapter uh, event next Saturday in Columbus. And I'm looking forward to that as well. As chairman of the foundation, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for continuing to make Fort Valley State University a transformative uh, institution and in innovation in academia. And uh, we could not achieve these great things without your input and without your dollars. And uh, I went and looked at the report last night, and your, this chapter is standing tall. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you for all that you've done. Because of you, for the first time in the history of our school, the alumni and those that are affiliated with the alumni have given $2.2 million to our, our National Alumni Association and all of the individuals thereof. And I just want to mention three or four items that you can talk about to people about Fort Valley. I don't know whether you, I, I brought the video with me. I sent it to um, uh, Ms. Moore. If you would, share that video with, with everyone because people don't know it, and, 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 uh, but that was a statewide innovation conference mm -hmm. by the Georgia Chamber of Commerce about three weeks ago. Thousands of Georgians don't, don't truly understand the spirit of invention at Fort Valley State University, but they got a crash course on TV the other, a few weeks ago, when our students, four of them, won first prize, first prize, in the Georgia Inventure Contest in Atlanta. Georgia Tech was there, University of Georgia was there, North Georgia was there, and Fort Valley State was there. And I went to the Board of Regents meeting with Dr. Jones, and they showed that video. And when I told you how proud, I just stood up. I just couldn't, I just couldn't take it. I just, I just was so excited. I just told the Board of Regents, we the real deal. All right. And, and, and uh, because we read so much about our institution in a what? In a negative fashion. But now you haven't read much about that in the newspaper. But nonetheless, 
They won first prize. And, and then they showed me what it was called extendo socket. Now, these young people, all, they're going to do something with this. And it's, it's a socket just like this. And when you, when you do Christmas, you, you have, what, extension cords everywhere. But this extendo socket pulls out six feet, so you can use it just like you would an extension cord. And when you finish it, guess what? It goes back into the wall. And so when you build your house and what have you, you can get what? An extendo socket. And those students invented that, have the patent to it. And I don't know whether y'all know, but Lonnie Johnson was one of the judges. And I called him after I found out about this. Lonnie Johnson is the guy that does the, the water. Super, super soap. You remember the water gun that you play in your swimming pool? Yeah. In fact, he just sold a lawsuit with, with, a, with one of the leading firms in America for $93 million because he, he is an inventive. I mean, he, he has more patents than any African American, I think, in, in, a, in, Georgia, in the United States. Lonnie Johnson, he was one of the judges. And he said, Brother Smyre, you ought to be happy and you all ought to be proud of the students from Fort Valley State University. So give those four students a round of applause. Another matter I want to say to you before I close is that Bishop Hall, you know, this money wasn't in the budget. So I want to thank Freddie Powell, Sims, Faye Sons, and Patty Bentley. And we went to the budget writer. We've been trying to do Bishop Hall for five years. We went and told them what we want to do at Bishop Hall. We want to make it a communication system. They said, okay, what do you need? We need $4 million to put it in the budget. Now it's over. So we want them students to continue to what? Experience communication, to be able to, to, to have careers in journalism. So that's another item I do, do want to mention. And then the, the last item I want to mention is the, is the uh, marching band. I know they come here every year. But now, it takes more than one bus to bring them now. Hello, somebody. It takes more than one bus for the band to travel now. And uh, that made me happy. When they came to the Fountain City Classic, I said, oh my God, I got to, we got to do something. And uh, now we have, from that 28 that they came to Columbus two years ago, it's almost 100. So let's give a round of applause. That's it. So let's, let's hear from Thompson, the band leader. And um, the last thing I want to mention to you about Fort Valley State is, does this name ring a bell? Joanne Gibson Robinson. Joanne Gibson Robinson. Graduate of Fort Valley State College at that time in the 1930s. But, but Dr. King called her one of the greatest civil rights leaders, one that was active at every level of the protest, and one that was a staple in the Montgomery March, Montgomery Bus Cot, graduate of the Fort Valley State University. And I went and read about Ms. Robinson the other night. And uh, when the president called me, he told me he was going to name a street in her honor. Mm -hmm. It was just absolutely amazing. Apparently indefigable, she perhaps more than any other person was active on every level of the protest. People in the nation need to learn about Joe Ann Robinson. That was Dr. Martin Luther King's quote. Right. We have been told over the years that we're inferior. In fact, years ago, experts said that things and something was wrong with our genes and chromosomes. Many said we were incapable of learning and leading. Let me set the record straight. God didn't discriminate in his distribution of brain power and knowledge. Other folks and communities don't have a monopoly on brains. At Fort Valley State University, we are not biologically, spiritually, or intellectually inferior. All right. I can prove it to you. Show me a George Washington, and I'll show you a Christmas Alex. Right. Show me a William Lord Garrison, and I'll show you a David Walker. Right. Show me an Abraham Lincoln, and I'll show you a Frederick Douglass. Right. Show me an Albert Einstein, and I'll show you a Benjamin Banner, George Washington Carver, and Elijah McCoy. Show me. A Dr. Christian Bonner, and I'll show you a Charles Drew and a Levi Watkins. Show me a Theodore Roosevelt, and I'll show you a Booker T. Washington. Show me a Franklin Roosevelt, and I'll show you a Philip Randolph. Show me a Ronald Reagan and a George Bush, and I'll show you a Nelson Mandela and a Barack Obama. Show me. 
Show me a Dwight Eisenhower and I'll show you a Colin Powell. Show me a John F. Kennedy and I'll show you a Martin Luther King Jr. Show me a Lyndon Johnson and I'll show you a third good marshal. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Show me a, a Harvard, a Yale, a Cornell, and I'll show you a Fort Valley, a Savannah State, a Albany, a Morehouse, a Spelman, and a hundred other black universities in America. In closing, I want to say I support all HBCUs. I support them all, all being a state. Hello, somebody, our biggest rival, but I support them. I give money to all being a state. Because kids, kids don't come with colleges. Colleges ought to come with kids. So that's what we ought to be about doing. But I leave this with you as African Americans. If Jews need Brandeis, if Protestants need Harvard and Yale, if Catholics need Notre Dame, why don't we need historical black colleges and universities? Somebody ask me with that. We're not inferior. When my mother used to put me on that lap and say, you're not better than anybody, but you are good as anybody. That's the key. We don't want to subrogate ourselves above anybody. We just want what? Equal protection under the law. And that brings me to my last thought in here. That's Senate Bill 278 that was introduced in the Georgia General Assembly by a colleague of mine. It's the worst piece of legislation. I've been in the House 45 years. Worst piece of legislation, 273 and 278. 273 was signed by five African Americans, senators. That was on a Thursday, I think. On Monday, they went through their name for the bill. And another bill had to be introduced. They knew how bad it was. So 278 is a new bill with only one senator on it. And I want to say this, and this young man talked about migration. If we didn't want equal, separate but equal back then, that's what we were trying to get away from. That's what Boyd versus Tomaker, or Kansas, that's what that's all about. Separate but equal will take us back. And I'm not ready to go back. I'm not ready for that. So we're going to do everything we can. I can just write this down. Dead. On a right. If it happens to ever get out of the Senate. But it should not even be discussed and talked about. Because when you talk about separate but equal, you talk about what other folks want to hear. Because some folks would like to have go back to separate but equal where we were. And we just cannot do that. So I just, I just implore us to not to do that. And in closing, Fort Valley State University ought to be like the redwood tree. Y'all been out to California before? The redwood trees are them huge trees. You can drive a car through a redwood tree. Y'all see them out there, they're so big. They were started by the Sequoia Indians back in, I mean, way back when the Lord uh, was growing big trees. And they said, the redwood trees are so strong that when the south wind meet the redwood tree, boom, boom, it became the north wind. That's how strong a redwood tree is. Fire resistant, fungus resistant. And one day they say, one say, why is the redwood tree so strong? And that's why Fort Valley ought to be like a bulwark in the forest. They said the reason the redwood tree is so strong is because they dug deep into the forest and they dug deep. And they found that one redwood tree was wrapped around the root of another redwood tree. Another redwood tree would rock around the root of another redwood tree. The other redwood tree would rock around the root of another redwood tree. That redwood tree would knock around the root of another redwood tree. Mm -hmm. So the moral of the story is that when you mess with one redwood tree, you mess with the whole darn forest. So that's what we ought to be at HBCU. We ought to stand in the bulwark of forests and be strong. And that's what I think about my institution, Fort Valley, our institution, Fort Valley State University. We in the church, and I thank God when I got up. And I want to say this while I'm leaving. I feel this way. If you're at home sitting on the edge of night with the young and the restless, talking about all my children, there's, gonna, there's a lot going on as the world turns. 
discussing with your neighbors the days of our lives. Something happens and you must leave for General Hospital. If God is not your guiding light, then you need not search for tomorrow because you will not see another world. Y'all, thank you very much and thank y'all for inviting me to be here. This stop was put in the main four-way intersection on April the 24th of this year. If I'm not mistaken, we had two fatalities in 2018 in this intersection. And so far this year, we haven't had any, and we're hoping this is going to alleviate that problem. Complete stop is a total cessation of movement. That means you are at a dead stop. You're not still rolling. You are stopped. The wheels are no longer turning on that vehicle. That is a stop. If you're in the market for affordable transportation, come on in to Dublin Auto Sales. Getting to work, school, or around town every day requires dependable transportation. And that's what you'll find at Dublin Auto Sales. Offering in-house financing, too, so credit is never an issue. See Wayne Kemp or any of his friendly staff. Bill Topping, Alan Fields, TJ DeRochi. Look for Dublin Auto Sales at 1705 Telfair Street and 406 North Jefferson and also at 511 North Jefferson, where you'll find a great deal. Dublin Auto Sales, affordable transportation you can count on. Okay, Representative Smiley. The Dublin Lawrence County Chapter of the Fort Dallas State University National Alumni Association would like to present to you this gift of love to show our appreciation for your presence here today. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we appreciate you coming out and taking time out of your busy schedule to do this for us today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, now we get down to the part of our scholarship recipient. The recipient of the Fort Dallas State University Scholarship is Ms. Kiana Marie Jones. Please come forward, Ms. Jones. Stand right there for me, please, Ms. Jones. Let me tell you a little bit about Ms. Jones, okay? Ms. Jones is an honor graduate of Dublin High School. During her tenure at Dublin High, she participated in the following activities. ROTC program, she was a member of the Beta Club, the captain of the football, basketball, and competition cheering squad. She was the student council president and mayor of the Dublin City Youth Council. Her community involvement entails volunteering with, with Habitat for Humanity, Georgia Secretary of State Student Ambassador, hosting Georgia Teen Voters Registration Drive, serving citizens at local soup kitchens, representing her peers in the Dublin Lawrence County Teen Court, assisting with the mayor's Mordecai activities, and working with the American Red Cross collecting and donating items for hurricane victims. Other extracurricular activities include interning each year with the Fort Valley State University Department of Agriculture, <coughs> teaching with Susan Dasher's summer program, and teaming with the local law enforcement for National Night Out events. She is truly a student with a mission. It is an honor for me to award this scholarship to such a deserving young lady, Miss Kiana Marie Jones. Let me just say thank you to our keynote speaker and thank you for such an inspirational and motivation motivational speech do the thing that as alumni of Fort Valley State University and the communities in the state we need to hear the, 
those type of things throughout the state of Georgia. Yeah. And if you want, if we want our children, those of us that have children, and I do, <laughs> 17, 17 year old and be a senior next year in high school. Those are the things that we need to hear. We need to hear the positive thing. We need to hear the thing that, that's good that's going at, on at our school, all HBCUs. Yes. We are just as capable as students that attend other schools. We didn't set the criteria. The criteria has been set for us. So now we are meeting those cri criteria. Same thing as in basketball. They set the rules in, in basketball, said that we couldn't play if we didn't have a certain, certain score. But what happened? You look at the courts. Look at the basketball court. How do they look? Same as before. <laughs> so we can too, and we are capable of doing it. But thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Representative Smyre. And also thank you to our scholarship recipient. Mm -hmm. I also, also want to say, that Ms. Turner was filling in for our scholarship chairperson, Ms. Rosa English. And it is worthy to be, no, to, to be known that Ms. English couldn't, couldn't be here today for other, re other reasons. She had a death in the family and she couldn't be here. But she is one of the hardest working persons in our local alumni chapter and she needs to be recognized and, and remembered. Along with her other, other committee members, and I'm going to recognize also one of the first found, uh, charter members, Ms. Clarissa Pullen. I'm on, she was on the scholarship committee as well. Ms. Pullen could not be here today because of uh, the graduation of, a grand, of her grandson, I believe, in South, over in South Carolina. But I just want to let that be known. It is my pleasure to recognize all of our guests here today. Of course, each and every one of you is a special guest. And we are so thankful that you came out to be a part of this 14th annual Charter and Scholarship Banquet. First, I want to recognize, if we could, our charter members of the Fort Valley State Dublin Lawrence Chapter. If you're here, stand or raise your hand, all charter members of the Dublin Lawrence chapter. Thank you. Let's recognize all graduates of the Fort Valley State University. If you're here, stand and wave your hand. I'd rather you stand so everybody can see you. If you're a graduate, wherever you are. Thank you. We'd like to recognize the other HBCU graduates here, Savannah State, Albany State, whatever you are, I don't want to call out names, but the other HBCUs of the state of Georgia. And you may be out of Georgia, please stand. All right. We would like to recognize our civic leaders, councilmen at large, at large for the city of Dublin, the Honorable Jerry Davis. And our former civic leaders, if you are present, please stand as councilman, councilwoman, and appointed commissioner for the city of Dublin, Ms. Julie Driver. Are there any other city officials that may be here? Benny Jones, thank you. The Honorable Benny Jones, city councilman, thank you. We'd like to also recognize a former speaker for the Fort Valley Dublin Lawrence Chapter Banquet, Reverend Michael Curry and his wife. Uh, before I forget, we want to recognize members of the Divine Nine. If you're here, please stand. Any members of the Divine Nine for our HBCUs? All right, Kevin Smyre.
Mr. James Brown, Lawrence County Board of Education. Thank you, sir. And now, we would like to re-recognize the Honorable Calvin Smyre from the 135th Congressional District. We appreciate your coming. And former National Alumni Association of the President of the Fort Valley State University. We would like to present to you our current president, Ms. Luann Gross, the National Alumni President for FBSU. And with her, a friend of Fort Valley State University, Ms. Helen Scott. <laughs> Mr. Charles Robinson, CEO of Sadie Mays Health and Rehabilitation Center, and on the foundation board of the FBSU. Mr. Edward Boston, Interim Executive Director of the Fort Valley State University Alumni Chapter, and his wife, Daphne. And we'd like to present to you Dr. Janet Sims Lee, Class of 1970, Mr. Boston was a class of 1970, who is the Area 6 representative for Dublin Lawrence Chapter. Thank you for coming out and being a part. Did I overlook anyone? We're so pleased that you came out to join us today. Thank you. Planting time is here, and that means it's time to go to Roach Farm and Garden. We have all of your vegetable plants in stock, and we carry your favorite garden seeds. We have farm implements. If it goes behind a tractor or it's something you need on the farm, we have it. Our friendly staff will help you find any kind of animal feed or fertilizer you need. We'll even load it for you. Springtime is here, and it's time to start your next outdoor project. So make your first stop Roach Farm and Garden, Dublin. Roach Farm and Garden, growing traditions. I'm Philip Parker and I'm Kendra Guys, and the company is Ashton Enterprise Inc. and we're looking for local drivers in your area. The requirements are Class A CDLs, a clean MVR, clean drug screen, and Twig Card Preferred. Here at Ashton, being home with family is very important to us, so we offer our drivers to be home every evening. We offer competitive pay. We have locations ranging from Sandersville to Savannah to Augusta. Call us at 478-595-6846 or 404-436-0002. And remember, this could be the job opportunity that you've been looking for. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful, wonderful program. Uh, Dublin Chapter, please just raise your right hand and take it over your left shoulder and give yourselves a pat on the back. You done showed out this evening. <laughs> you done showed out. This was such a wonderful program. And uh, Calvin, uh, uh, Marilyn, you are such a great friend. And uh, but you made an error. I'm not as old as Cal Calvin and and, and uh, Boston. I graduated in '74. <laughs> I used to call Calvin Mr. Calvin. <laughs> when I was in high school, I met him when he was going to, going to college. But um, I guess all of you can say that this program and its purpose has been so wonderful. And the Dublin chapter has worked so very, very hard. And I was looking at your program booklet and all the sponsors that you have. That shows hard, hard work. And on behalf of the Alumni Association, we just like to use those same two wonderful words. Thank you. Thank you. And I know all of us can agree that the food was delicious. And this place is 
this, this banquet, just look at the decorations, just absolutely beautiful. It shows blue and gold, loud and clear. And Fort Valley State, Fort Valley State, you have let everybody know that your lives, our lives to be, we do dedicate. And this, I, I am a member of the Macon chapter, and uh, one time I, I got to take this little story. Uh, a lady was working with me, and, and she, uh, she was talking about she wanted to go to school, and uh, she wanted to be a teacher, and, and I, talk, I used to talk to her all the time. And she said, she said, Ms. Lee and Calvin, I want to wanna tell you this, you show is done expired me today. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately, I had to go to teacher mode. <laughs> but oh, it does not matter. And I, I know that she had the passion. She really wanted to be a teacher. And I had to, I just sat her down and I just started teaching her. And she became one of my greatest students. She was a custodian at my school. She used to clean my room every day. And she would just talk to me all the time. And, and, and when she said to me, she said, Miss B, you just expired me. <laughs> and I, I was speechless, but it was a teachable moment. So what we have to do when we see people and they are longing for, they have the hunger for an education, sometimes we just have to teach them. And I was so proud of her. One, one day we had a paraprofessional position open and the principal was looking for somebody and I told her to give her a chance. And she was very skeptical, but she did. And guess what? She became the best parapro we had on the set. So it doesn't matter whether you inspire or expire. You have to reach somebody. Each one, teach one. But first of all, you got to reach one. And a, a preacher told me one day, she said, it doesn't matter. You know, we talk about. We, we did a little fashion show about what to wear, what not to wear to church, and, we, and, and I was commentating, and, and I talk, we were talking about these people coming to church with anything on, but the preacher informed me, and she said, but that's all right, we gotta catch the fish. No matter how they spin, we gotta catch them first, and then we clean them up. So that's what we have to do. We might see some fish walking around here. Help clean them up and bring them on the fourth ballot and let them be a mighty wild right. Again, thank you so much. And in closing, just say a prayer for our university. Mm -hmm. And in saying your prayers, we also need you to kind of open up your pocketbooks. Because in order for us to reach students and teach students, we have to get them there. In order to clean them up, we gotta help pay for them to get there. Because sometimes, I know all of us, um, every time I talk to some of my classmates, we have the same background. We came to Fort Valley as astronomers and geologists. Yeah, when we laid down at night and looked up at the ceiling of the house, we became a strong because we could see the stars. Yes, <laughs> then we walked on the floor, we looked down, we became geologists because we could see the ground. <laughs> but thank Come God, on, Go thank ahead, God, Go ahead, there was a little school that was three minutes from my house called Fort Valley State oh, University. Oh, I thank God for giving me life, but I thank Fort Valley State for helping my life get better. Oh, and all of us have that to look forward to. Have a great, great evening. Thank you.